is we're starting our fall session of the Dismantling Depression and Anxiety Workshops. Some of you are returned, some of you are brand new. And this is one of the things we want everyone to have as an example of what we do in the workshops. A banner is hanging here, but I don't think it's showing on our video. So I want to give each of our new gals one of these. And what this represents, this is a brick wall as you can see. And let's see, who would like to explain this? I know you're not on camera, but that's okay. What is this about? This banner. What are we doing? Knocking down the bricks. Knocking down Dis the bricks. Dismantling our depression and anxiety. Yes. Brick by brick. Brick by brick. Perfect, Diane. And one of the things that I always like to say is that if I loosen a brick over here, it could be related or connected to a brick over here. So when you're working on one area, you're working on more than one area. So each of these, we call it dismantling depression because we're taking it apart and we're looking at its workings within us. And when we do that, and anxiety as well, when we do that and know what's happening, when it's happening, then we can start to pull the brick out of the wall because it, obviously depression and anxiety is very, very difficult to live with. And whether you have it seasonally, you have it uh, chronically or clinically depression, or just once in a while, I do want to tell you every person on the planet gets depressed at some point. But some of us have a pattern of depression, and that is a whole different uh, beast, so to speak. And everyone has anxiety as well, because these two things, believe it or not, protect us. Depression, as you will learn, protects you. That sounds so weird, I know, but it actually is in place to help us to get to the next level of things. So anxiety as well, it, they're kind of like sisters, depression and anxiety. You're, not, you're going to have both eventually. Anxiety leads to depression. Depression triggers anxiety. You know, so they're so interrelated, it's kind of hard to separate them to a great degree. Okay, so that's, that's our wall that we're working on pulling down. And those are not necessarily in order, even though they are numbered on the wall. They're not necessarily in order. So, any questions on that? Okay. We're not brick layers. We're brick dismantlers. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and start in prayer, ladies. And our desire in putting these on YouTube is that men and women... Because men need this as much as women do. In fact, I think many of them need it more. Because we're the emotional person, uh, gender. And men bottle it up more. So I really, that's my dream and my passion is to get it out there so that men and women, teenagers, can see it. So let's go ahead and open it for prayer. Father, we thank you for bringing us here tonight. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy and that you have all the answers that we need and we desire to seek those answers from you. I pray that each woman here will be calm in her spirit tonight to receive what you have for her and excited that just a little part will start to bubble up of hope and that this this can really truly take place, that we can dismantle depression and anxiety. We can resurrect our hope and joy in you. And we thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice for us. We ask your blessing on our time tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, well, I'm excited. And <clears throat> first thing I want to start out with tonight is most of you know who Sinead O'Connor is, correct? 
any of you watched Dr. Phil in the last year or so? If you don't remember her, okay, well, she, she had the number one hit record when she was 21 years old. The number one song in the world, not just in the United States. She's the one that shaves her head, pretty much. Um, she's in her 60s now, I think, but she was so, so severely abused by her mother. Sexual abuse, molestation, mm -hmm. physical abuse. I mean, to the point of her mother would get her on the floor and stomp on her abdomen. Mm -hmm. She was trying to destroy her reproductive system. Mm -hmm. That Her mother was that mentally ill and messed up that she was doing that sort of thing to her daughter. She actually, Sinead O'Connor actually attempted suicide eight times in one year of her life. So Dr. Phil said to her in the midst of his interview of her, and you can go online if you want to and you know, watch, watch those videos about that. I went in and did a refresher course for myself last night to make sure that I remembered everything I wanted to say to you. So Dr. Phil said to her, Sinead, what did you love about your mother? She said, what I love about my mother is that she's dead. She was a monster. So this is a woman that was traumatized so severely, and obviously her mother was mentally ill to be that off, that unhinged. And she had other children that she was doing similar things to. But Sinead said it was like a torture chamber, that her, her mom was literally that. She, she got enjoyment out of it. Sounds so odd to some of us, but. So I want to mention that some of us, maybe all of us, have a genetic predisposition maybe, to depression and anxiety. But we don't have to live up to that because we didn't know what else to do. You're here because it took a hold of you and maybe that's genetic or maybe that's simply life. But I do want to say this. If you grew up in an environment, well, let me ask for a show of hands. How many of you grew up in a pretty normal, lovely childhood? Raise your hand. Hmm. More hands went up than I expected. <laughs> so the point being that if, if you grew up in an abusive or negligent upbringing, violence, alcoholism, physical abuse, sexual abuse, any of those things, what happens in trauma is that you kind of almost get frozen in time in a sense because growth that should have been taking place within you as a human being, as you're growing up, is stopped at a traumatic stage. So there's a gap in your development and yet you're trying to live as if you have that gap filled. So we have to then present ourselves as if we are fine, when in reality, we, we aren't fine, but we don't want anybody to know that we're not fine. So gaps in development really hinder um, everyone, but to pretend that you have that gap filled in when you don't is extremely anxiety producing. So what we do in the workshops is we try to help you recognize where there were skipped times of development that you've tried to live as if they weren't skipped. And that caused you stress that you maybe didn't even recognize that was stress for that reason. That there were things you should have been learning. And you, you could have jumped over your whole childhood and not gotten what you needed as a child to become a healthy adult. But guess what? It's good news. You can go back and fill in the gaps. And that's what I teach women to recognize and to do, to actually go back 
and reparent yourself and help yourself grow up into a healthy and strong woman. So, chances are that you also have had trauma, stress, etc. And PTSD is, is a common thing, post-traumatic stress disorder. That what, what that comes out of is that you have a trauma, but you don't finish the grieving working through process. You just move on to the next thing in life. And so then it crops up as traumatic stress because it wasn't dealt with at that point in time in a healthy way. So that's what post-traumatic stress is about. And again, that's related to gaps in development. So tonight I want to mention to you, this is our season that, because it's the beginning of fall, we're going to walk right into the holidays with this group. And it is a time of year that your to-do list can double. You can actually end up with twice as much of your normal that's why so many people struggle during the holidays is it's so much more uh, pressure on top of the normal things that you do that it's added and so you have to do everything you always did do and now it's time to enjoy the holidays and it can be really challenging to do that so for us and I include myself in this because I went through all of the things that I'm talking about. And for those of us that struggle with depression and anxiety, a little stress can be too much. Our perception of stress is skewed and not reality. So a little bit of stress to us can feel like somebody dumped a truckload of you know what on us. And that's because of the gaps in development as well, because we don't cope as well, because there's things missing that we haven't addressed and filled in. So I want you to be aware of that, that your stress level is different than people that don't have anxiety and depression. As you grow and overcome, you will get stronger, as I have done. I now can take quite a bit of stress, as Susie well knows. So as you take care of the things that need to be taken care of, stress will change. Your, your relationship with stress will begin to change. So I want to ask you a question. Well, first of all, let me, let me share with you how this concept was born. The concept that I'm sharing with you tonight was born when I was in the midst of a very severe depression. And literally, this was given to me during the depression, which some people aren't real teachable when they're depressed. So it was a real gift. It was a real gift to me because what I do in my life is I get the information with the Lord, whatever I need to get from him, and whatever I need to do, study, whatever it is, but then I have to live it out. I have to live it out before I can give it to you, which to me sometimes is frustrating because I get so excited. Oh my goodness, I learned this, and now I want to give it to you prematurely. So I don't do that. I live through it, and then the Lord helps me to package it and give it to you. That's what he's given me as part of my giftedness. You also have your giftedness. I mean, we haven't discovered it yet, but you do. So, let me ask you a question. What happens in your home when you have too many appliances going on the same circuit? Power blows. Power blows? Happens in my house. Yeah, fuse. Yeah, fuse. Circuit. All the energy shuts off. Okay. So, what do you have to do then when that happens? Look at the breaker. <laughs> Find your breaker box. You have to go to your breaker box, figure out which circuit went off, or maybe you have yours memorized, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then you have to flip it back <coughs> on 
And my husband always told me, you, you don't just flip it back on, you flip it completely off first and then you flip it back on. Yeah. But that's, I guess, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that, but he told me that. So what would happen if the breaker did not shut off as it is made to do? A little louder. You'd have a fire. Yes. Your house would literally burn down. That's what breaker boxes are for. They're to protect us from that. So tonight, this is literally a picture of my own breaker, breaker box <laughs> at home. And you're going to get this handout. And it's fascinating to me when I realized how powerful this is. And some of you are already getting it. I can see it on your faces like, oh, okay. Starting to get that. So we'll give that handout to you in a little while. But each breaker in you and in your house is set up to take a certain load, a certain amount. Now, as I said earlier about skip, uh, skip development gaps, your breaker box may not be as big or as strong as another person that hasn't been through some of the things you've been through. And shame on you for that, right? That's what we do to ourselves. Shame on me, I can't take as much as so-and-so can take. There's no guilt and shame in being where you are from what you came from. And so I want to release you from that. It's not, it's not anything to feel guilty about or ashamed about. It just is. And we understand that as we're going through this together. We understand, and you're going to understand more, that you can take a certain load of stress, but there's a point where your breaker is going to flip off, and what do you think that is? What when it, when it turns off? What do you think that is? That's happening in your house. You're preventing a house fire in your body. If you have stressed yourself or allowed yourself to be stressed or didn't have anything to do with it, and you shut down, you shut down because. It's protective. It's to keep you from totally imploding. So it's actually healthy. You know, we can blow one or two of our breakers, and I'm talking symbolically, and maybe not notice it that much because we're so used to living this way. We, we don't hear a lot of our own signals. We're numb to so many things. I did that for years. I would just ignore and just keep doing, keep, keep the plan. Step one, step two, step three, no matter if you are, you know, you're not really present. You're actually acting like you're present, but you're absent because you should be home taking care of yourself. That's what depression does to us. And so many of us just, we, we learn to keep pushing ourselves and that's what pushes us further into shutting down and numbing down. I became so numb to things because it was survival. You have to shut all that off so you can survive, right? So unfortunately, that's not good for you. It's certainly not healthy for you. So in a literal breaker box, the breaker weakens each time it gets... Did you know this? Carol looks like maybe she did. Every time that breaker gets popped off because you overloaded the circuit, it can take less stress in your home. And the same is true within you. So it, if you don't take care of yourself when you need to, it's going to take less stress for you to get to that same place the next time. Make sense? So... In this case, with the literal breaker, breaker box, it's going to take less current to make that flip off. And so you're resetting it more and more and more. And the same is true of us with our own internal breaker box, is that we've reset it so many times that if somebody looks at us funny, you get thrown into stress or depression. 
So let's look at ourselves through this lens for a moment. We do have breakers inside of us in a symbolic way. And it has God-given shut-off points. Depending on where you are in your life. As I said earlier, I can take a lot more now than I could years ago. So I am much stronger than I was years ago. But those limits are put on us to protect us. When, when you're so stressed that you shut down, that's what you need to do. You need to take care of yourself. Let yourself be. You know, we're really good at not letting ourselves be. Just be who we are. We're good at pushing and, come on, you can do it. What's wrong with you? How come you can't keep up? Et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's self-abuse. That is actually neglect and self-abuse when you are not letting yourself off the hook when you need to. And you're going to begin to learn that. And then as you go along and learn more things, you're going to recognize sooner so you don't end up crumpled up in a ball in bed as often. And sometimes it's okay to have that. We teach that in other lessons, so I don't want to go into that too much tonight. But So giving yourself permission. Each of us is different. And, you know, it, again, I said, is it your upbringing? It depends on your upbringing. It depends on how well you were parented. And, you know, we learn, we learn from our parents how to not take care of ourselves or how to take care of ourselves. And so if we became invisible, I'm fine. I don't have any needs. I'm always wearing a smile. That's me. That was me. That I had to be always upbeat, but then go home and not be able to function. What you're doing to yourself. And that it can be self-abuse. It can be neglect. Push, push, push. Perform, perform, perform. You're probably, a, you know, maybe stuck in black and white thinking. It's this way or it's that way. There's no gray areas. There's no grace uh, along the way. And we're going to learn about giving ourselves grace. You know what? You can't give grace and, and genuine love to other people when you inside don't have it. And if you do, you're giving from an empty well. If you don't have grace within you, you can't give it to others. So we need to first receive the grace, and give the grace to ourselves. So, with what names, what names might you label your breakers? See, you can see on my breaker box, each one has a little label, label next to it that says what it's for. And so I was thought of a few things that I won't write on the board for the sake of time, but I do want you to hear me that these are what should we call them, monikers or handles or expectations, you know, thing, things like that. So think about these in the context of each of them being one of the breakers in your breaker box. Wife, mother, friend, housekeeper, daughter, Christian woman, thoughtful, giver, miss fix it, make everyone else feel comfortable, buy and give gifts and cards to people who could have dropped off your list years ago. So we do this to ourselves, we keep allowing things to be heavy on us where it's our responsibility to figure out what I can remove, or what I can lighten up on, or what I just don't need to do anymore. I don't even send Christmas cards anymore. I hate to say that, but it's true. I just gave up on giving. When, when postage stamps <laughs> got as high as they did, that was finally okay. Okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. 
And I hate to say it, but it's a big relief because it was added in there to all the busyness of the season. Holiday season, this year can be different for you. It can begin to be different if you learn and apply the breaker box principle. Learning and applying it will bless you and it will bless those that you love deeply because you'll have more to give them rather than less. Here's a powerful statement that emphasizes and actually embodies the breaker box principle. This is from Psychology Today. This will be in your handout, by the way, except if you're on the video. We'll figure that out later. This is from Psychology Today, Remembering Robin Williams and Why Clowns Cry. Every time I think of him, I, don't, I start to tear up. This is from Billy Gordon, Ph.D. Remember, the breaker box. Now listen to what I'm saying about the glia cells. How many of you know what a glia cell is? Most of us. I don't see any hands going up. Okay. Glia cells are involved in myelination. Anybody know what myelination is? It's the coating on your nerves. Susie certainly knows. Um, it's the coating on your nerves that helps them be protected and function as they're supposed to. So it's like the rubber casing around wires. You know what happens when the wire casing gets compromised and an electrical wire is exposed. Likewise, you also know what happens when the wires are too small to carry the current. This is proof that we are very much like a breaker box. If you wear off the coating on your nerves, then they're not going to function the way that they're supposed to. Let me read that to you again. And what is this telling you? And if you've ever had an emotional breakdown, I've had at least three. And that's versus a nervous breakdown. Emotional breakdown, I don't know how you separate the two, but I wasn't mental, so to speak. So here's the quote again. Glia cells are involved in myelination. Myelination is like the rubber casing around wires. You know what happens when the wire, wire casing gets compromised and an electrical wire is exposed. Likewise, you also know what happens when the wires are too small to carry the current. So right now, you may have that going on inside of you. It can heal. We can recover. But this is talking about a, a less current. So in other words, a smaller breaker box. Depending on your background, depending on how you were brought up, depending on multiple things in your life. So will you ask the Lord to reveal your healthy limits to you? Healthy limits. Ask him to help you listen. How often do we ask the Lord for something and then we don't? We just walk away and do our, <laughs> do our business. If, if we are asking him to help us to recognize these things, then we should take a little time you know, downloading is such a common word these days. Download what he has to say to you about your healthy limits. What are healthy limits for you? Healthy limits for you might be different than they are for me. Probably are. So I have a few verses I'm going to share with you, and these will be in your handout. But these verses do apply uh, to busyness that causes too much stress, the holidays coming up. You know, it seems like we turn to September and it's this, everything changes. It's like, oh dear, it can be that way. And so we need to start applying scripture to those times when we are stepping into being overwhelmed. So this is Matthew 8, 26. Jesus was in the boat and the storm was raging. And what did he do? He got up and he rebuked 
the storm. He told it what to do. In Jesus' name, we don't realize how much power we have. We don't stand in our power. We aren't even taught this much in our churches anymore. But he has given us the power to rebuke the things that are coming at us that are too much. We can make them obey. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that you get away from me or you get out of my house or whatever it is. Not, I'm not talking an entity, but I guess I am because a lot of times it is just, it can be. It can be an entity, but very often it's just your own head. Your own head that you haven't learned quite yet how to control it. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We don't come to God like sniveling little. No, you don't have to snivel. You have Jesus Christ within you. You have his power and his grace and mercy upon you. Baptism is a picture of being clothed in Christ, leaving our former life behind. Of course, we kind of have to grow into that, but you know that's what we're doing. That's what the picture is of. So come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. So, how? How do we do these things? I kind of gave you a little bit of an example, but we can claim and demand and command things in Jesus' name. You know what? It's best to do that out loud. You can think it, but if you speak it, there's power in your words. There's power over your environment through your words. So speaking it out loud is much more effective than just internal prayer. So boldly rebuke the stress and boldly receive the calm that he wants to give you. Boldly choose to stand in it and boldly reaffirm it. So having done all to stand, stand! So we need to stand in what we know. And that's why it's so important to know scripture, to know what Jesus said, and to live like he lived as best we can. And we can't do that apart from him. So all of this, he has to be the center of it. And our words are powerful. Our words can destroy others. Our words can destroy us. Or our words can build and encourage and bring people, lift people up. And I know all of you want to do that, but maybe that's not what you are doing all the time. So it's my hope that you will ponder and grasp this example of the breaker box that I showed you. You can avoid depression and anxiety. You can short circuit it by hearing the inner voice that tells you to either slow down or stop earlier. We override that very often. Some of us, we can't even get up out of our chair. It's different, you know. For, for this person, they're overperforming, and for this person, they're underperforming, and it's the same problem that's driving both of those things. So we just kind of get frozen and why bother? You know, it's just too much, so I won't do anything at all. So I had become numb to hearing that voice, and I suffered for years because I was just kept pushing on, just kept one foot in front of the other, you know, get over it, move on. No, that, that isn't, didn't help me at all. I now recognize that though it was mostly unconscious on my part, it was nonetheless, as I said earlier, self-abuse and neglect. Maybe you need to reparent yourself with grace and mercy and love. You know, 
I just learned last night, actually, that Sinead O'Connor is now proclaiming herself to be a Muslim, but she had been a Catholic, and she ended up tossing aside that religion when the big scandal came out about the priests. A lot of people were totally knocked off their pins. Certainly Catholic people were. But she managed to survive. She had four children, even after her mother tried to destroy her reproductive system. She ended up having a, a hysterectomy like, at the time that the video was made, it was two years prior to that that she had the hysterectomy. And that's when she completely fell apart because that was her reproductive system. And so there was a lot of connectedness to that. So I want you to think about all of these things, study your handout, read, read through it, and pray through it, and apply it to the degree that you can at this point. And you know, we often say this in the workshops, you can come through hearing this same material, and every time you'll go away with something new or different that you didn't get the last time. Is that true? Yes. Because your focus right now, you can focus on this much, but next time you can focus on a different part of it. So it is all, it's a growth process. It's all a growth process. So God bless you mightily in your journey as you dismantle depression and anxiety. You are on a journey. It's not always going to be easy. It's going to require that you change some things up, but you're going to be so relieved when you recognize what you've been doing to yourself. The pressure and the guilt and the shame that you've been pouring on your own head, that is abuse and neglect. So I praise God that you're here, and I, I'm thankful for what's going to happen in your life. And it's already begun as you listen or as you come through this lesson uh, uh, or this workshop a second time then it goes a little bit deeper. Father, thank you for this information tonight. Thank you that you gave it to me when I was in desperate need of hearing it. Thank you for allowing me to implement it into my life and to recognize how destructive I was being with myself. So Lord, I pray these women, these men, whoever is watching the video, teenagers, I pray that each and every one of us will recognize where we've been abusing ourselves or neglecting ourselves or being actually violent with ourselves emotionally. Maybe the voices of our parents or another authority figure echoes in our head and we don't know any better, but you're teaching us better. We thank you for that. We give you praise and thanksgiving. Help us to implement this into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.